Welcome back to the Music Marketing Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about social media advertising uh, and how artists can use it to promote their socials, how they can use it to kind of uh, sell tickets, to get more streams, um, and basically just how you can be doing it effectively. Um, to start with, should we talk about kind of why you need to be using social media ads? Yeah, social media ads are just amazing cheap ways of getting your music in front of people and I'm sure you've seen it before because you're musicians and artists you'll be interested in music so you'll probably get targeted with other artists ads mm. and you will see so many promo videos and music videos just getting boosted onto your timeline and it's just such a cheap way of getting onto people's timeline and getting to know you as an artist and just getting that general brand awareness out there. So people liken it to like, if you paid money for a billboard on a street yeah. and to get 10,000 people to walk past it and consider you, all that is is a static image and you've got a video with sound that goes out to 10,000 thousand people mm. that and it's going to cost you like ten dollars instead of ten thousand dollars for that billboard and also ten thousand people that you want to be seeing it yeah i think it, it's fantastic exactly um, so, so they are just so effective yeah i think it's also become a lot more popular over the last few years because a lot of algorithms have changed massively so mm -hmm. uh, people have maybe collected ten thousand likes on their facebook and used to post content and it would immediately get interaction whereas mm. now the organic reach is so, so low on Facebook. Yeah. Um, with Instagram, it's a lot better, but still the ads are mm -hmm. sort of becoming more and more essential. I, yeah, I think Instagram is a platform. The reason I love Instagram is because when I go on it, it's so, for me, like I have followed those yep. people and nothing interrupts it. So for example, if you go on Facebook, you get like interrupted by like memes, Unilad and uh, someone has commented on this and it turns out they've just replied to another comment and that's ended mm -hmm. up on my timeline. Like Instagram is so clean mm -hmm. and that's why I love Instagram. Yeah. And that means it's really difficult for artists to get onto feeds on Instagram without mm -hmm. using ads. Yeah. Because do you use the discover section on Instagram? No, I actually don't. The do you? Yeah, no. The, dis <laughs> the, the discover section is if you've got interest, the algorithm will throw up Mm -hmm. other things that you might like well actually yeah in the past like i think it's the past few weeks instagram have started putting ads in that section really which is insane because yeah. it, I, i'm guessing it's going to be based on like how well it's performing and that means people are using it if they've made a user experience yeah. decision to do that. um yeah they've started putting ads in it i don't know if you have to pay more i don't know if it's based on engagement they haven't really released the stats mm -hmm. on it but um i saw an article on it and basically shows that ads are becoming more and more successful yeah. um, because they're giving it more space. Yeah. Um, and obviously Instagram want to make, wants to make more money, but if they're doing that, it shows that it's getting the engagement because exactly, their main yeah. aim is for people, to, like, consumers to stay on the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're not going to put more and more ads on if people are leaving the platform. Yeah. So it shows that ads are working. Yeah, so there's only two ways to really get your product or your music onto people's timelines, and that is using ads and using influencers. Mm -hmm. I think we'll save influencers for another episode. Yeah, that's a very yeah, long one, yeah. that one. Today we'll talk about ads. And there are two ways to run your ads on Instagram and on Facebook. One is through the boost slash promote button mm -hmm. uh, below all of your uh, Instagram posts and Facebook posts. And Facebook will always try and get you to boost my post. Do you see it when you're running the boost Every to day, page? Yeah. yeah, it comes up saying, uh, this it's post is five percent more popular. Yeah, this yeah. post is performing well, and it's not that it's not. <laughs> interesting. Right? Believe me, if we thought it was going to perform well, we would have boosted it. Yeah. And on Instagram, you've got the promote button. We don't use those features apart from one exception, and mm -hmm. the one exception is if you go to our Instagram, you will see that we put a lot of text on our ads, mm -hmm. um, not our ads, our posts. Mm -hmm. So we put a banner on there and that's to get people's attention and give you an idea of what the post is gonna be about. Mm -hmm. So we do videos similar to this and it gives you an idea of what it's going to be about. And the amount of text on there, especially as we subtitle it, will not go through the ad manager. It will, it will get detected and it won't allow that much text. The reason for that is 
people will send instructions on those that amount of text mm -hmm. saying you need to do this this and this to get this product and it kind of spoils the aesthetic mm -hmm. to get around that we use the promote button directly in the instagram app and just do everything from there second thing you do, can do is the ad manager this is where you have so much targeting and um, just so many stats that is going to blow your mind mm -hmm. in terms of how precise you can target people, how you retarget people, re retarget people, and even create an audience based on. So passionate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even create an audience based on um, the the people who've interacted with posts previously. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll let you speak in a minute. I it's promise. okay. You go ahead. <laughs> and basically. There is just so much more on that platform that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, and the best thing about that is that you can create loads of different things. So for example, you can boost an Instagram story post. If you want the swipe up feature, mm -hmm. you can go onto the ad manager, which is through Facebook, even for Instagram, because in, uh, Facebook owns Instagram. You can do swipe up features. A little hack that I've recently been told, which is awesome, I can't believe I didn't think of this myself, is a lot of ads when you run them on Instagram look different as an Instagram story because you don't have those native GIFs mm -hmm. and the emojis and the, the Instagram style text that we yeah. do. What you do is you go onto Instagram and put all of that on as if you're going to upload it as a post. Click save. Don't upload. Yeah. Don't upload and then go and upload it to the ad manager and then it looks so native yeah. mm -hmm. when you're going through it and I don't think I've done this with any of our clients yet but I will mm -hmm. be and when it goes through it it looks like it's an yeah. ad people don't even notice it's got yeah. sponsored at I the think top. that's like one of the main tips don't make an ad look like an ad <laughs> yeah yeah um, and I feel like we'll talk about like what kind of content you should put in your ads first um, but before that should we talk about kind of how you create those boost ones, like mm -hmm. explain how they do it. So you said that you get the content, you post it like normal, and then you just boost it. What would you base the kind of boosting on? Which posts would you boost? Yeah, so with ads, I think a mistake a lot of musicians make is that they will take their music video or take their music and boost it because their music's awesome, right? Everyone's everyone wants <laughs> everyone wants more ears on their music and all they have to do is get people to listen to 10 seconds of their track mm -hmm. and they will be a fan, but that's wrong. It, even the biggest companies in the world who have the best products in the world can't sell their products through one single ad. They have to have a series of ads. They have to have a funnel. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is find a piece of content which is going to stop people scrolling and take notice of it. This won't be the music. <laughs> and it doesn't know. It won't uh, be the because music. Because <laughs> when you're advertising music, you're asking people to spend three to four minutes, which is mm. the length of your track, mm -hmm. and consider your track. And Turn it's, the sound on for one, yeah. and perhaps go to another platform. Exactly. All three of those things are basically impossible with first scroll. Exactly. So how do you get people to stop scrolling and say, I want to invest four minutes of my time on this track might be good. It's incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. So you've got to think of creative that is going to stop people scrolling. Mm -hmm. And you've got to think, you've got to think, what do I have at my disposal for these ads? What is going to make it, um, what is going to, what tools do I have that will make it work? So for example, if you had people who were really interested in, in football or soccer and you put your track over some amazing highlights from a soccer match mm -hmm. and you got the audience targeted for soccer fans, mm -hmm. then people will stop and watch because they know they're interested in it. Then you retarget all of those people with your music video or with your promo video, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they've heard this track before. Where did I hear this track? Oh yeah, it was there. I'm going to stream the full thing now. Mm -hmm. So there you, you need, you have a hot and cold audience. Mm -hmm. You've got your cold audience, which is people who are discovering you for the first time and you need to warm them up. And then you've got your hot audience who are kind of heated and they know you and they are likely to do something that you ask them. Mm -hmm. What's one that I've been loving at the moment and I think he's doing a great job is, I think you pronounce it Kwasa? Oh yeah. K-W-A-S-S-A. -S 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 he, I 
fully went through his whole funnel, like mm-hmm. the whole thing until I finally streamed. He was on one of my Discover Weeklies. I think I listened and was like, yeah, that's all right. I might not save it. I saw him on Facebook and I think I maybe liked a video mm-hmm. and then I was bombarded. I had his first bit of content, which was him playing the keys in a meme sort of fashion. Um, you know, the Wii music's playing, yeah, you look yeah. at all the, co- yeah, it was like that. And then it went down and down and down until finally I got to the stream, but I streamed it. I've saved so many of his tracks now. Yeah. And that is the perfect way to do yeah. it. Um, I- and, and it worked. I literally saw myself doing exactly what we try and do to the exactly, consumer. It yeah. was amazing. And what ended up happening there was you saw one piece of content, you went to the profile and you got retargeted as yeah. one of the profile visitors mm-hmm. with a different piece of content. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing about Quasa is that it made me realize that sometimes ads aren't just about getting people to listen to your music, it's to stop them skipping it when they come across it on Spotify. So especially for the major labels who know that he's gonna be on major playlists, but Mm -hmm. you probably haven't heard of him. And if you've seen an ad, this is what happened with me with him, I didn't skip his track, but I probably might have if I wasn't Because you recognize the name. At the end Mm -hmm. of the day, I think it's like branding. So your, your image, your logo, your overall look, the music, yeah, and just remembering your name, and that's from bombarding people with that content, and that's usually through ads because doing the all kind of organic reach can be quite difficult for a lot of artists. And I just think that was fantastic. That whole funnel method was amazing. Do you think it, it's extremely expensive? Do you think it's doable for it artists? De- it depends. I would recommend if you've got a smaller budget, stick with one area and one town, mm-hmm. and know what you're trying to achieve from it because you need to know what's at the bottom of that funnel. What do you need everyone to do? Is it to stream your track, look at your music video, or show up to your gig or buy your merch? Mm-hmm. What's what's the end goal? Because it, it's all got to start at the top in order to get to the bottom. Mm-hmm. So you need to have your goal in mind. I think personalizing ads is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So the idea of you look at uh, selling out a gig in Edinburgh, and the first bit of text that comes up in the ad is from Edinburgh, mm-hmm. question mark. like you're immediately going to stop scrolling if you're from Edinburgh because you're like, yeah, why? Yeah. Uh, Everything that's personalized, I think is fantastic. Um, It's like the catfish in the bottom, an ad that came up on my profile. Mm -hmm. It, they basically did a personalized thing where you could put your name into a logo Mm -hmm. um, and the ad comes up where it says like Molly and the bottleman Mm -hmm. and then the name changes repeatedly Mm -hmm. because I follow catfish in the bottom on Instagram. I saw the ad and saw the names changed and was like, what is this? Yeah. Click through to the ad, realize that you could personalize the logo to either share on your socials or put on a t-shirt came off it and then was just bombarded Yeah, Yeah, and then was funneled down. So you're capturing people's attention straight away. And that wasn't, that's one piece of really creative top content, like top funnel content I did that I've never thought of. Yeah. Something that makes people click because they're curious. Yeah, that's all you need to do in the first instance. Yeah. Get them curious. Mm-hmm. Don't try and get them to act because no song is good enough to get people from scrolling from mm-hmm. Instagram. They're just in that zone of just being bombarded with yeah. different pieces of content. Um, and doing ads, you need to sign up to the ad manager. So we'll link that in the description and just have an explore of it and Facebook themselves do show you the different kind of funnel methods and different Mm -hmm. sections that you can go through and you've got to be willing to test so you don't just do one ad which is going to run forever Mm -hmm. you do you could make 10 different variations of different ads different videos different text different track Mm -hmm. and then see which combination works for you the cheapest and what's really flying and getting that engagement, then once you know your winner, that's when you get rid of the rest and then just go for it. What are your thoughts on, um, because I've heard a lot of artists doing this, sometimes it's cheaper to promote in other countries. So places like Brazil can be very, very cheap. um, And yeah, it's real organic reach. Mm -hmm. But do you think it's pointless because yes, it's cheap, but is it really translating into fans? Okay, so... I would do this if I was doing what's called social proofing. Mm -hmm. And you want a cheap way to get lots of initial likes and comments on a post. And it can cost you $10, which something, say, in the USA or UK will cost you $200 to achieve. Mm -hmm. And that's because you're going to countries where the GDP is lower, which means that advertising um, competition is lower. So 
Microsoft or Apple aren't advertising there because there isn't as much money for the consumers to spend. But for artists, that does make it a lot cheaper yeah. to come in there and reap all those rewards. Yeah. And if you have good creative and have good content for them, then they like it and they comment. You take that same post and with all of those comments and with all of those likes and then go to the USA and the UK and people see it and say, that's already got comments and that's already got likes it must be worth my attention. Mm -hmm. So it's social proofed and people are sheep, they follow each other. So that is where I'd recommend doing that method. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it for streams, it's pointless because unless you're planning on touring these mm -hmm. countries, yeah. it's pointless. Okay, and um, what are your thoughts on, I know we've been exploring this a lot, using memes as your ad. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's effective? I think it's effective if you get it right. So mm -hmm. you do have to think of something funny and relatable. Uh, if you go on a page called Music Life, you'll see that they are using memes to promote various artists. I did a whole YouTube video on this actually, yeah. talking about how artists can promote their music using memes. Um, and I know I discussed it there, but we didn't talk about it as ads. Yeah. Um, but I'll link that video below for you to see how you can do it kind of organically. Yeah. Um, but as ads, is yeah. it the same? It's two ways of doing it. One, you pick an existing meme which has already gone viral and put yeah. your music to it. And secondly, you can make a meme out of your yourself or your own music video. I love that one. Yeah, and, and just pick something from your music video that's gonna get people's attention. The biggest tip and the best tip you'll ever get is when you run your ad, put your full music video in the comment section mm -hmm. and it will remain there. And because you are the original poster, you will get your comment pinned to the very top. You can which do that with all your ads though. Like, yeah, you can do it with all your ads, yeah. yeah. So that meme gets people's initial t attention and then they listen to the track and then they click through. Yeah, for those of you who haven't seen my video on YouTube about talking about memes and how kind of you can promote your music using them, um, we show you how major labels are doing it. Uh, that music life page that Alex is talking about, they have Polydor, they have Virgin, they have Warner, they have all of the major labels, and they edit a music video from kind of some of the biggest artists in the world, like Harvey, mm -hmm. Sigrid, all of these artists, and they edit it into a really, really short snippet. They don't even put the track over the top sometimes and put a caption that's relatable. So it could be, I think one of them's Harvey in his music video dancing, and the caption is something like, me at the club. Like something mm -hmm. that's really vague, but people will tag their friends in it, and then when you're tagging your friends, you see at the top that the song's there and you think, oh, I might check that out. I think it's, I think it's a really good idea. I think it will... Absolutely, yeah. I think more artists should do it, but I think there's this really hard kind of... A lot of artists want to take themselves very seriously. Yeah, um, yeah. But this one, you're sort of taking the mick out yourself. Yeah. We're entering a world where nothing's serious online as well, no. unfortunately. So you've got serious artists entering a world where everything's just memes and dogs mm -hmm. and cats. And, and also, you're going... People are going to rip the shit out of you on social media. Yeah. You need to be, especially when you're running ads, yeah. <laughs> prepare yourself now. We've run ads for artists before and the comments have been savage. Mm -hmm. Like you're putting your music and you're putting your content out to people that haven't always asked for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might have, uh, they might be from your area and you might be promoting to that area, but they haven't asked for it. So sometimes the comments can be really savage. They can be taking the milk a little bit. Mm. But that's all kind of part of it. And it's engagement and it and they can't tell negative it, comments. Yeah. Negative comments are engagement which makes your which makes it cheaper to run an ad because Facebook or Instagram will see that it's getting engagement. It must be good content that people want to engage with and they want to see because Facebook and Instagram want you to spend plenty of time on there engaging with things. Mm -hmm. And if you've got an ad that does that, absolutely fine. Do you want to explain what it means though for why is it cheaper? What, what makes an ad cheaper mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of people think that you pay money and it's done like you, yeah, you pay 100 yeah. quid and you give it to Facebook and they do what they need to do what yeah. makes an ad cheaper what does the price depend yeah on? you give them a budget or so you can do a lifetime budget for how long the ad is going to run or you can do a daily budget it will put it out to as many people as it possibly can in that audience in that audience and targeting that you have selected and it will give you a price so it's like cost per engagement or cost per view if it's a video and it will calculate how much it is costing you for people to stop scrolling and view your video. Facebook will try and push you into saying, I want you to measure this in three second um, increments essentially. Mm -hmm. Go for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is a much better way of measuring how successful it is because 10 seconds is a good amount of yeah. time. 
Okay, cool. I mean, I think that's something that a lot of people wouldn't know. Mm. Do we want to talk about what content works best in the ads? Um, I know we've said mm-hmm. that like the top funnel should be something that's engaging. What could that be? Yeah, so it, we've mentioned memes. They work incredibly well. Um, things that are clickbait and are going to get people to stop mm-hmm. scrolling. So something where... Personalized stuff that we mentioned I think works well. Yeah, personalized stuff, things where things are missing. So, for example, I can't believe this happened or, Mm. yeah, something like that that is just different and people are going to stop scrolling and you've told them that there is something missing from their knowledge and Mm. they need to watch this video Mm -hmm. to find out. Things like that work. So whether it's behind the scenes and something happened, whether you're doing a challenge, so a drinking challenge behind the scenes, Mm. backstage, that could work Mm -hmm. and just because it doesn't have anything to do with your music doesn't mean you can't retarget them later Mm -hmm. so that is kind of top of the funnel stuff and then you can start retargeting them with lyric videos or promo videos for your latest release and getting Mm -hmm. them to do something and the more layers you can put in that to that funnel the more likely you are to get those results at the very end i think what's good to understand though is like the more layers you have, the more ads you're putting out, the more it costs. Mm. But it's it's worth the investment. Yeah. I, I genuinely believe the the artists that are spending more now will have better results in the long term yeah. because the price that we were paying this time last year is it's completely different. It's, yeah. it's rocketing up because more people are spending. The bigger brands you're kind of competing against, and they're spending millions. So the earlier you jump on it the better, I'd mm, say. Completely agree, yeah. I, I think we've covered everything. Yeah. It's a, There's a lot to talk about. If you think we've missed anything, make sure to let us know. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that's all for now. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe or rate this podcast if you haven't already. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.